All right, so it's been a decent amount of time since my last update video, and as you can see, the machine has once again ch changed a little bit. The biggest difference being, of course, that I now have put together the pneumatically actuated linear tool rack, and all the macros are working. And we also have a fixed tool probe for measuring the new tool between tool changes. And uh, there's also been some updates to the electronics as well as the spindle VFD enclosure has been finished. But um, I want to start the video off by showing perhaps the most exciting part of everything. So let's just make sure everything is turned on. Like the pneumatics. Machine has been homed. So M6 tool 1. Right now, as you can see, there is no tool in UCNC, so. Alright, so there you saw it loading up tool 1, now let's load up tool 2, and let's see if that goes flawlessly. And it does work, it's been very reliable, have not had a single thing go wrong um, outside of user error. The macros work, and all that. Just turn that off. All right, so as you can see, the tool changes are now automated. And I just want to talk about the uh, fixed probe for a bit. Basically, it's supposed to work in combination with the uh, M31 probe, which is for the uh, workpiece height offset. So the way it works is with any tool loaded up, you go down, you probe off of this probe, and then it goes over to the fixed tool probe, and it measures the difference in Z height between the two surfaces. And it saves that as an offset value in the C axis DRO. I think you could actually see it right here from my last job. It's at 42.57 millimeters. So basically what that means is that uh, that 40, the 42.57 was the previous Z height difference from my previous jobs, which was actually uh, facing off this, uh, I guess you could say like fixture mounting plate for the vise. Um, I zeroed off of this point right here and the height difference between the two was that value in the C-axis DRO, 42.57. And so when you load up a new tool, rather than having to probe off of this area, which you might have already machined through or whatever, you simply probe off of this and it applies that new offset and you go right back into machining. Um, I don't like setting up the uh, tool table in UCCNC. I think that's too much work. I'm constantly swapping out tools. Uh, even with eight clamps, you know, it's uh, sometimes I, j I have more tooling than that for one-off jobs and so that's uh, what I've been doing and it's been working out very well. It's been, haven't had an issue once. It's always been very accurate. And so I'm very happy with that. Um, let's talk about the uh, misting system. So as you can see here, the uh, misting system is quite a bit different. I just have these two nozzles uh, right now. Only one of them is blowing, but the way it's configured, is of course there's a coolant line going to them 
as well as the compressed air line. And the coolant line actually has a solenoid. You can see I talked about this in my last video, mounted on the gantry. And it is wired to the controller. And the new thing about this coolant is that rather than mounting it above the gantry and depending on the vacuum from your uh, air assist pulling the coolant through and creating a mist, which I always found unreliable. Uh, you didn't ha have quite the control when it came to uh, adjusting flow. What I did instead is uh, I actually added another regulator. It's uh, set at a very low pressure, just enough to push. As you can see here, this is the tank. It's empty right now from my last job. I was cutting some aluminum. Uh, basically, the air pressure goes here. Coolant line comes out of here. Sorry for the camera focusing issues, but essentially it's just pressurized to a few PSI. Um, I found these uh, G quarter to four millimeter push fittings and they go through the chain up to the spindle. And so when air assist is working, we simply have a solenoid here that turns that air on. And then when I also want it to produce a mist, the pressurized tank is, it's always pressurized. There's no leaks. Simply it activates that solenoid and creates the mist. So let me actually demonstrate that. Let's see here. I think, I think this is the air and this is the uh, mist. No, other way around. So that's the air. And then let's see if we can get a mist. So this is the one that's blowing right now, it's just air. And as if, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's actually spraying just water is what I have right now since I'm still testing. I haven't gotten any coolant or uh, tried to pump ethanol through it, but uh, it's been working. It's been working very well, I'm very happy with it. Uh, one issue about these, which I uh, didn't really take into consideration at first, is actually you can't have the most ideal position of the nozzle pointing at your tool and your cuts because the tool holder, the, the tool changer, has to, uh, it can't interfere with the tool changes. So um, ideally, I wouldn't want any debris blowing in that direction. Maybe position the nozzles behind the spindle so it's blowing debris towards the front. But then, of course, during a tool change, you can see how that would interfere. So let me show you more about the uh, tool rack. Uh, first of all, it requires a two-way four-port solenoid, which I have over here. It's an SMC valve. And... Here's the assembly from the rear. This is a SMC 32 millimeter bore, 100 millimeter stroke, uh, two way. So uh, essentially like a piston on either end of them. It's not self resetting with a spring or anything like that. These are, I believe, um, 15 millimeter high wind rails. I think I showed them in the last video. And then I just 3D printed a few parts uh, like uh, this plate right here, this piece right here, and then these two columns to attach the 2020 extrusion to the rails. Now, uh, this is a uh, temporary, it's been doing a very good job. I'm actually very impressed with how it's been doing so far. Um, outside of the small torsional rigidity issue, I can't really show it in video, but basically because of how narrow this piece of extrusion is, uh, it's not perfectly uh, parallel with the gantry and so uh, this side is pushed uh, outward a little bit more. And so uh, when the spindle goes in for a tool change, um, these clamps are forward about a millimeter or so more than they should be. But it hasn't interfered with the tool changes. I haven't seen any scratches on the uh, tool holders or anything like that. And uh, every now and then I just push it back into place and it kind of stays that way for a while. And so it's been working just fine. Basically just uh, using uh, T-slot nuts and uh, M5 hardware and all that. Here's the design for the columns. And I actually had to print, uh, 3D print uh, a large sort of T-slot rail uh, that goes underneath these rails and I uh, had to uh, 
basically install M3 threaded inserts um, with a soldering iron, basically like melt them into the plastic piece. Let me see if I could sh give you a shot on what they look like. Yeah, so here you go. You can kind of see it. Oh, nope, not really. But um, yeah, here's the spindle enclosure, of course, incomplete. So you can see here we have the VFD, the breaker, the contactor, the NEMA power input. And as you can see, we don't have an IO panel yet. Just haven't gone around to machining it. I um, might have to, might, might want to replace the contactor and all that stuff. But uh, it's been working very well. I'm very happy with it. Uh, I am concerned a bit about how I'm going to uh, ventilate that. Obviously, I can put a fan in the bottom, like in the uh, controller. But um, the exhaust, I'm going to have to take that into consideration. I haven't noticed it getting hot or anything like that when running jobs. But uh, I prefer the VFD is still well ventilated. So the controller has also undergone a few changes. Um, believe it or not, the wiring was worse than this. So I've cleaned it up a bit. Uh, it's still very temporary because uh, I also haven't updated the I.O. panel for that. But uh, if you can, uh, if you remember from the previous videos, I removed the 5 volt power supply. I just basically bought everything that's that works in 12 or 24 or 48. The 5 volt, I ended up having no need for it. And instead, I put in place these DIN rail mount solid state relays. And the reason for that is because we've exceeded the capacity of the original UB1 breakout board. Um, basically for the, uh, all the solenoids that we're using. Remember we have a solenoid here and then we have four solenoids here. And uh, there's still another solenoid I'd like to add. Uh, one is I've actually disconnected the air line of the constant air blowing around the spindle, keeping debris away from the bottom of the spindle during jobs. And another solenoid, because you can actually plumb in air to this tool probe and it'll blow off the debris from the top of that surface, which when I was cutting out this uh, celled PVC fixture plate, I actually noticed just how much I actually need that. So. Um, as you can tell, I did create a bit of a mess. Oh, another thing is that uh, the clamp for the water cooling cylinder reservoir holder broke. And so I'm going to have to eventually rebuild this. Uh, I don't know if you can see on camera, but uh, I made the mistake of mounting everything on the outside, which made it easy in the beginning when I was building everything out. But now that I'm cutting stuff and there's debris going everywhere, uh, I will eventually have to... Uh, install it inside of here same goes for the pneumatic system now that it's matured to a point where i know what kind of enclosure i need and all that stuff i will eventually get an enclosure for these two things um another interesting thing that i found which uh i actually haven't configured properly that's why it's not showing a proper value but this is a uh, flow meter so right now it's showing zero liters per minute and that's because actually water is supposed to be going this direction, not the other way around. And there's a little impeller that you have to flip inside in order for it to show the proper value. But uh, in combination with the temperature and the flow, considering the spindle costs, you know, orders of magnitude more than what these cost, I figured it wouldn't hurt to have some fancy LEDs show you some diagnostic information like coolant temperature and... Uh, flow hmm what else what else what else uh, just got this new uh, Technix ER16 collet uh, I originally buy bought all my collets from Meritool but uh, they looked awfully similar to the ones I was getting from China and so I'm not accusing Meritool of not making their collets in the USA or whatever uh, maybe there's a fine print somewhere that uh, says the ER16s are imported, but they look just like the Chinese ones that I got off of AliExpress. And so I'm going to give these Technics collects a try 
and right away they do look quite nice. Uh, haven't measured, haven't measured the run out on these yet, but uh, and I do have more uh, more of these two holders coming in. I decided to go with these cheaper ISO 20 ER16 two holders that you could buy for less than 20 bucks. They're honestly it's kind of shocking just how good of a tool holder you can get for 20 bucks. And uh, yeah, uh, more more thing I want to show is the spindle working. So in the software in UCCNC, we now have control. So I don't know if you can hear the VFD fan having turned on. Let's try M3 S2400 or 24,000. That's 400 hertz. So precisely 24,000. And the way I'm uh, communicating with the VFD is using RS-232. There is a fantastic plugin put together by a member over on the CNC Zone forums. Uh, that's his name right there. Dan. 911. Oh, sorry with the camera focusing issues. But um, I'm going to show you guys the settings that I'm using, because I'm using some uh, some uh, Sunfar VFD, which uh, isn't very well documented. But here are the settings. So we of course have the basic values of the min and max RPM, 400 hertz. And then there's a bunch of registry values that I had to find, such as 1001 for the on-off address coil, 1002 for the frequency, 1, 2, and 3 for the spindle forward, reverse, and off. And then the checkbox for single holding registers has to be checked off. And this plugin is absolutely fantastic. I didn't have to go down the rabbit hole of uh, figuring out Modbus to get that to work. So very happy with that. And um, yeah, that's about it. So uh, machine is working. Pfft. I'm going to be honest, this is probably the first time I put something together that uh, while it did take a tremendous amount of work and effort, it's been uh, working very reliably. It kind of feels like a dream come true. You press cycle start and uh, the machine just changes tools on its own and probes itself and uh, finishes the part for you. Um, one issue I do still encounter, and uh, it has been reduced significantly since I've moved the vise all the way to the front of the bed, but one issue I'm still having is debris getting onto the tool holders. I'm still working on the design for the cover mechanism. I'm thinking of flap that sort of opens up when it pushes through. Uh, really, I just want to cover up these tapers so that debris doesn't get onto them. Uh, the spindle doesn't seem quite powerful enough with the dust blow off around the drawbar to uh, properly clean them up, uh, especially if I'm running any sort of misting coolant. Uh, those chips, they end up you know, being covered in water or coolant and sticking onto those a little more stubbornly. So still working on that. I don't know if it's just going to be a flap or if I'm going to incorporate more pneumatic cylinders to, I mean, really depends. And uh, I do plan on machining out a new bar for holding all those clamps. But again, it's been working just fine the way it is. And I think I'm going to leave it that way. All right, so if you have any questions, if you're working on UCNC, doing a machine conversion yourself, feel free to contact me if you have any questions. And uh, thanks for watching.